Over a hundred years ago, Australian author Henry Lawson wrote a comic story along very similar lines. He called it the loaded dog, and needless to say, he made the whole thing up. Still, we can't assume it couldn't happen, and that's enough reason to put it to the test. The first thing we obviously needed was a frozen lake, and the researchers found us one here in Alaska behind me. This snowfield you see is, in fact, Fisher Pond, a man-made lake, which means there are no fish for us to kill, with a nice coating of rock-hard ice on top. The ice on the pond is too thick to dig through, and that supports the myth. But can it support a two-ton truck? Okay, here we go. Orson Smith and his fancy ice drill should give us a quick answer. Fans of slapstick should appreciate the <laughs> breakthrough moment. That's a hell of a thing. The ice core cracks up as it's bashed loose. Look at that. Put back together, right. it's a foot and a half thick. So it's got vertical crystals that make it really uh, stronger than average. So it's safe for us to drive our SUV out here? Yes. All yes, right. I think so. Good. That'll hold a lot more than that SUV weighs. So far, so good. And it's really cold. Out here on the lake, it's 20 below but that can't slow down the science. But this story has a ton of components to it. And the first part of it is how far can you throw a stick of dynamite? Standard stick of dynamite, about eight inches long, uh, about a half a pound. I figure I can throw it about an M5, which is 100 feet. That's how we measure things, Adam and I. Remember kids, this isn't real dynamite. We would never throw real dynamite, and neither should you. All right, Jimmy. I want you to put your chi into this thing. That's it. Go! Nice! Jamie's toss is up over the 100 foot mark. Now it's Adam's chance to prove he's got the uh, mojo of the oh. throw, Joe. <laughs> Those look to be about the same. Two hefty, manly throws with an average distance of 125 feet. Okay, time to bring out the dog. This is Rudy, a young black Labrador. Puffing, drooling, and full of running, he's a born retriever, making him the perfect candidate to try to cover the distance there and back before the 20-second fuse fizzles out. The myth is about a black lab that retrieves a stick of dynamite. That's what Rudy is. As you can see, he's raring to go. He really wants to retrieve that stick of dynamite. And has no idea what he's signed up for. Now, we've got to get another myth started. OK, so we're in Alaska in the snow. What myth did we get? Okay, well, this is a fairly gory myth that affects a lot of Alaskans, but not so many in California. What's that? It's about the moose and what happens when you hit one with your car. This is what happens when moose meets motor car. And it's all too common here in Alaska. Your best bet is always to stop or swerve. But this myth kicks in when a crash is absolutely unavoidable. Even a low-speed collision most often ends with something bigger and heavier than a fridge coming right through your windshield. The myth says that speeding up instead of slowing down might push the unlucky beast over the car, meaning you might live to tell the tale. Well, obviously we're not going to kill a real moose to test this myth, right? Right. Now uh, we're, we're going to have to make our own moose analog. They'll also have to wrangle a bunch of stunt cars and a safe test venue. But those are problems for tomorrow. Right now, they need to design a moose that can bounce back from something like this. Oh! Have either of you ever seen a real moose? No. I don't think so. Maybe we should try to find a real moose, so that way we can make our crash test moose as close to a real one as we can. These California kids have never seen a wild moose, but they've had a tip-off from Alaska Fish and Game to search no further than downtown Anchorage. 